Hi everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Beacon Mix Create for the first time. This is gonna be a from square one all the way to the end to know everything about Beacon Mix Create. Let's get started. After you've downloaded the Beacon app, you should have a window that looks very similarly to this. On the far left-hand side, you have your profiles. This is where you can save multiple profiles to switch between um, you know, different types of games, um, or anything else, it's going to save all of your volumes, your assignments, um, and really everything. In the middle here, we have our device column, which will show you all of your connected devices, as well as the different modules for each device. On the big window on the left, we have our mixing UI. And across the top are all your different mixing faders. These correlate directly with the knobs on your screen. Across the middle, we have our personal mix and audience mix UI. This is where you tell our app where to output your audio. And across the bottom, we have our routing table. This will let you selectively control which audio sources go to which audio inputs in the apps that you're running. The first thing that we're going to do though is we're actually going to set up our default Windows devices. Let's go ahead and right click on this icon in the bottom right hand corner and click on sounds. I'm gonna to go to the recording tab first. Beacon Mix Create or the mixing function of the Beacon Mic is gonna create a bunch of virtualized devices for you in Windows. In the recording tab, you can see clock source, audience mix, LDM relay, voice chat mic. If you see do not use in parentheses, that just means that it's something that we need to be able to route your audio properly, but it's not something that you're going to have to actually physically assign or use. In the recording tab, I'm gonna have you choose voice chat mic and make sure it is set to both your default device and your default communications device. This is a big one. By doing this, anytime you open an app that accepts a microphone or an input, it's going to use your voice chat mic to do that. If you decided to do something else like audience mix and you go into Discord, your friends are gonna hear everything from your computer. 90% of issues that we end up seeing with audio not going to the right places is because the defaults aren't set up correctly. So try to remember this step the best you can. In the playback devices, we're going to set two different defaults. You're going to make chat your default communications device and system your default device. So anytime you open up a communications program like Discord, Skype, or Zoom, or even in-game chat for some higher-end games, that audio is going to default to chat, which would be my second knob on my device. Otherwise, if it's not a communications device, system is a great catch-all for everything. So everything is going to default to system first. I'm going to show you how to assign things away from system in a second. Now that we've assigned our defaults, the next thing we need to do is assign what device is our microphone and where our mixes are going to. For me, I have a beacon mic, so I just choose microphone beacon mic in the drop-down list. However, I can use any input that's connected into my computer. For example, I have an Elgato cam link plugged into my Sony uh, DSLR camera. If I wanted to use that instead of my beacon mic, I would just uncheck beacon mic. And then I would select the cam link right here. This doesn't sound nearly as good though. And we're back. You can select multiple microphones here if you want to. Just remember that you can't control the volumes of those independently. Now that we've done that, you probably have noticed that you're still not hearing any audio out yet. That's because we haven't assigned where your personal mix is going to output to. You can have up to two personal listening devices. For me, I have my headphones directly plugged into the Beacon mic, so that's my first choice. And then I also have a set of speakers running out of the line out of my motherboard. That's my second choice. Any playback device should show up right in here. Choose whichever ones you want. To flip between the two, all you need to do is flip this switch right here or hold down any knob for up to 1.25 seconds. Now that we've done that, let's start going through the different UIs for mixing. By default, we've created four different knobs for you. Mic, chat, music, and system. At the top of each fader card, you've got these six dots. This will allow you to reorganize these knobs however you would like. If you ever need to delete a knob, click on the little chevron next to the knob title 
and click on delete knob. You can't have less than four knobs at a time. To add a knob, click on the big plus button on the right hand side and choose whichever type of knob you want to assign. If you have multiple input devices or microphones, you can add a hardware device that'll act just like the microphone device, but lets you have individual control over those. I'm gonna delete this one. And let's just go ahead and add a browser for now. Down below the title of each of the fader cards are these colored rectangles. And these colored rectangles are just aesthetic, but you can change them to be whatever you want by double clicking on them. This is really cool. This is actually gonna change the color of the button on your Beacon Mix Create, as well as the colored rectangle. Down below the colored rectangles, you have these little lock icons. This is called knob locking. What knob locking is designed to do is it gives you a way to have the same source on every knob page. That means if I'm on my second knob page and my microphone is on my first, if I lock it, it'll be on both my first and second page. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my mic and then show you how it works. So right now that I've locked mic, it says locked fader. So my first knob page is going to be mic, chat, music, system. My second knob page is going to be mic, music, system, browser. Mic is in the first position on each one. If I wanted to lock chat as well, now page one would be mic, chat, music, system. My second page would be mic, chat, system, browser. One thing you'll notice is that as I am adding these different devices and reorganizing them, it's also adding and reorganizing them down in the routing table below. Let's talk a little bit about the faders. So the faders and the knobs are directly correlated on your screen and in your app. By default, we've linked the two, which means that your audience is going to hear exactly the same volume as what you're hearing. However, we do allow you to actually manage these individually. To do that, all you need to do is click on this little link icon down below, and that's gonna unlock the two faders. Now you'll notice when I turn knob to my music knob, it's only adjusting for my personal mix and not my audience mix. If I switch over to the other one, now it's doing it for my audience mix and not my personal mix. One really cool thing we let you do is we actually let you do something called ratio locking. What ratio locking allows you to do is preserves the ratio relationship between your audience mix and your personal mix. In this case, I have my personal mix set to be about twice as loud as my audience mix. And as I scroll it up, it will continue to stay in that relationship. Down below the ratio link button is our source list area. This will list all of the sources that are routing audio to your different playback devices in Windows. To change an application's assignment, all you need to do is go to the very top right hand corner of the Beacon app, click on the icon, and it's going to open up the UI for Windows for you automatically. From here, you can assign your outputs just by clicking on the top drop-down list. In this case, I'm going to assign Spotify to music. Once I've done that, you'll notice that Spotify actually doesn't show up here. That's because it's not playing any audio. So if it doesn't show up in that list, or if it doesn't show up in this list, make sure that Spotify is actively playing audio. Now when I do this, We've got audio. And it also shows up in the source list below. Down below the source list is our mute modes. Mute modes allow you to selectively mute to various sources. By default, all of our mute modes are set to mute to all. So when I mute Spotify, it mutes to myself, it mutes to my audience, and it mutes to my voice chat mic if I'm routing it to there in the routing table. The other options I have are mute to audience, mute to self, and mute to chat. Mute to audience is gonna mute it to my stream, but still keep playing through my other sources. Mute to self is gonna mute it to myself, but still go through to the other sources. And mute to chat is going to mute it to my voice chat mic, but is still going to keep playing through the other sources. Down below is the routing table, and the routing table is kind of like a more permanent version of mute modes. Mute modes are great for something that you're gonna to toggle back and forth multiple times during a stream. While the routing table is something that you probably don't toggle as often, 
for example, let's say you listen to only DMCA music. So you probably never would want to send music to your audience mix. Now, when I turn up my music, you'll see that it's playing to me, but because it's muted to the stream, you're not hearing it. Our mixing UI in Beacon Mix Create and on the Beacon mic are really cool. There's something that hasn't totally been done before, especially brought into this package. You can use any microphone in, any set of headphones out, as long as it shows up as a playback or recording device in Windows, we can route it for you and that's really cool. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have more questions, you can go to our Discord link down below and ask questions, or you can create a ticket with us on our website. See you next time.